let's let's move on to the Ryder Cup. Uh, that's that's why we're all here. As you say, uh, Tom had a, a week's head start on us, so uh, I'm I'm expecting some fireworks from you, Tom. I might let's have calmed start, myself yeah. out. You know, it's been a let's week. At the obvious uh, the obvious starting point, uh, Bryson versus Brooks. How's this going to affect uh, Team USA? There's been a little bit of uh, chat floating around socials and different uh, golfing online magazines, I guess, uh, saying that the feud is over or they're, they're very close to being buddies now. Tom, your take? Oh, I, I think it's sort of a, a temporary uh, <laughs> a temporary stop on, on the feud. I think for this week they've decided to shake hands, talk for a couple of minutes for the cameras, um, and they'll basically do their own thing. They certainly won't be playing together. And then once, uh, I don't know, once if they're, if they're on a victorious Ryder Cup team, you might see the sort of tensions simmer a little bit. But if if they lose, um, it wouldn't be at all a surprise to see, especially Brooks come out and potentially bag Bryson or, you know, put some little backhanded marks um, Bryson's way. So I think, you know, for this week, we won't see too much from them. But uh, if they do lose, heaven forbid, uh, I dare say it could be fireworks all over the USA team. They tend to sort of implode when things go wrong. Here, here's a situation for you, Paul. Yes. Uh, we're day three of Ryder Cup. We're into singles. Bryson, last man out. And USA need half a point to win the Ryder Cup. Bryson is uh, tied in his match, heading down 18. and blows it what is what is the 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 force the the fullback for him from brooks look like that next day yeah uh i'm thinking of the rolling eyes emoji um <laughs> i just look these two this could be one of the biggest halves of all time in that they've just built up this rivalry to get his bigger slice of that um, social media pie yeah um just there's no doubt that those two will be right at the top at the moment in terms of social media uh, digital media presence um so it could be a huge huge have uh, so i don't think you, it is you're saying that you think they might be best mates yeah <laughs> i wouldn't i wouldn't say that but uh maybe uh Brooks people spoke to DeChambeau's people and they said, let's get something going here. I don't think that is the case. I actually, I think they, they don't, they don't like each other. I'm trying to put it nicely. They don't like each other. <laughs> so what do you do? You either keep them apart. Um, and I think in previous Ryder Cups, uh, some of the Americans, they've been broken down into smaller teams like three teams of four, um, and they've sort of become their own groups within the team. They could do that with DeChambeau and Kepka this time around, keep them totally separate, or they could they could put them all together, uh, put them both together in the uh, four ball because uh, their rivalry might sort of get each other to play better. That They might actually play better if they play together in the four ball um, and absolutely smash their European opponents. Uh, otherwise, you just keep them as far apart as possible and, let, and then go, you're on team uh, blue, you're on team white, whatever. Um, and hopefully it works out that way. I, I think I've seen we've got someone who actually knows a wee bit about golf. This is perfect timing. Yes. Uh, welcome to Phil Tatarangi, to the cut line. You've... Uh, You've come in at the perfect time, Phil, as I say. We're just discussing uh, Bryson and Brooks and what the hell is going on in the USA camp this week. Yeah, kia ora, guys. Nice to, uh, nice to be on with you. Good, Really good call and a good question in the sense that um, I think everything that's um, been brewing, everything that's been in the, uh, in the media over the course of the last... Um, well, it's really kind of been out, out and being talked about by by themselves as much as it's uh, the, the punters and the media over the last six months or so. But this has been brewing for about the last 12 or 18 months. And um, and there have been other different 
contributors from the uh, from the outside or around the fringes that have added uh, a little bit of gasoline to the fire as well. So, um, so it, it quite literally is something that hasn't simmered down. It's just been parked for a week whilst they wear a slightly different set of clothes or the same set of clothes, put it that way. <laughs> and I guess as a, a, a man who's been involved in some some team golf very successfully in the past uh what does what do you make of bryson preparing for the, the world long drive championship uh that starts i believe on the day after the Ryder cup finishes so it'd be tuesday our time um it, it, it yeah. is, is an interesting one it, it really is i i must admit if i was the other 11 members on the team um You'd want to think that your, your teammate, once they got through with the uh, the FedEx Cup, that this was mostly the next biggest priority on their schedule. And it seems like um, Bryson has been doing quite a bit of work on next week's event, on his schedule. And oh, I'm, I'm, I don't know, maybe some of that doing that preparation might actually help him this week as well it would be easy to make the assumption that it would be detrimental um but is it a distraction and you you got to wonder if the other 11 guys are thinking um i'm not sure all of what he's doing right now is the best way to prep for you know getting five points um over the course of the uh three days at the end of this week maybe it maybe it is maybe it doesn't um he certainly does meet you know march to the a, a different beat even a different. <laughs> so, um, I think if, uh, if Steve Stricker is um, is wise, is you, you let everyone prepare how they prepare. Um, Brooks in, the, in his Golf Digest interview that um, got released here this past week commented as much that every other week of the year, as individuals, you know, you prepare your own way. You play 18 holes of practice round, you play 36 holes, you play pro-am, you hit balls, you, you work out, you do do whatever you do to get the best out of you. Yet it seems this week um, they're highly scheduled. And so maybe actually letting players just do whatever they do is the best way to get 12 individuals to come together and play the team. Yeah, uh, I'm going to throw Tom here. I know uh, someone who, who likes to grip it and rip it. Um, your take on on Bryson and the, the long drive setup. I know you sat through his, uh, his press conference today or all of the press conferences today. Yeah. He, I think he actually sort of said that the uh, blisters on his hands were actually before the FedEx finals and not, not this week or, or last week. So whether or not he's sort of being truthful there, um, I don't know. It's just going to be really interesting. Like obviously the whole sort of narrative around Bryson is that, he can't play in the foursomes because he plays such a different game. Um, whether or not they sort of hold true to that, I, I don't know. Like, there's sort of two ways of thinking, I guess. I mean, he plays his own way, but if you can put it down there as far as he puts it down there and then get someone like Morikawa or, or someone else that's sort of a gun, short iron, a long iron player, um, could be devastating. But at the same time, uh, whether or not they'll risk that, I, I don't know. Not sure Morikawa has much experience playing out of the rough. Yeah, that's the thing. Well, is there going to be much rough? Yeah, good question. I, I, I don't suspect there will be much right off the edge of the fairway. I, 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 like, I think the, the setup that was at Hazeltine and um, the ante, the setup that was at uh, Golf National a couple of uh, couple of years ago is um, will be the, the, the setup that's employed here. And, um, you know, the... the, the a couple of key things that, that stick out for me is that the, the Americans are longer on on average. Um, their iron games certainly statistically across the uh, the PGA Tour are sharper. Um, and, you know, it, the, the golf course, I'm sure at times, whether it's uh, across all the, the, the foursomes, the, the four balls and the singles, whether it's across all sessions, um, and we're expecting some win as well. Um, whether it's right off the tips or whether there will be a, a couple of different setups that, um, that 
Steve Sugar doesn't get to control, but he's had some heavy, heavy conversations with Kerry Hague about it. Um, and, and the, the US team prepared for that. There's a couple of holes where those setups could be quite different. Might not necessarily mean that bombing it, um, 350 off every hole is is what re- what's required. It's, it, it may well be about the angle, and, and, and Whistling Straits has a little bit more of that. Hey, Phil, have you played or been to Whistling Straits? Yeah, have been to Whistling Straits. Haven't played, had, didn't play in either PGA Championship that was there, um, but have been, um, have, have spent quite a bit of time on site, but haven't actually played played the golf course. But um, yeah, look, I, I'm, I'm intrigued to see how the golf course is going to play if the winds do kick up. Um, I think there's a bit more equity than than a lot of people are expecting there to be the across the, the likes of Matthew Fitzpatrick versus a, a, a Bryson. Um, mm. there, there's no two doubts about it. You, you, if you're, um, you're 350 and you're in the middle of the fairway, the game gets easier. Um, but a peak die design, really um, quite strategic in a, in a lot of areas. And so what's, um, what's clear with... Um, you know, a couple of uh, Steve Stricker's picks is, is that length is an asset, and so that may well be giving us little little um, insight as to what the setups may well be. And um, on some holes, with the nine hundred and sixty-seven bunkers that are out there at Whistling Straits, if these are not off the back, it may well be that they're on a set of tees where it can take out some of that trouble, and so. 315, 320 through the year, all of a sudden puts you in a totally different position on a particular hole. So it doesn't necessarily need to play right off the tips for there to be an advantage. Paul, how about that? Some serious uh, golfing insight. Not something we see a lot of here on the cut line. Uh, No, we don't actually see any of it on the cut line. (laughs) Um, So it's, it's refreshing.